Hello and welcome to this week's Grow Wealthy Grooming. I am your host, River Lee of The Savvy Groomer, where I teach busy pet professionals all about business and personal finance. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into today's topic. If you guys can see me, please give me a thumbs up or a little comment in the chat box. I'm going to pop that out right now so I can see if you guys have any questions or comments. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's topic, which is how to fire clients without burning bridges. Hey, Erin, how are you today? So I've had this question a lot recently, and I think that's really kind of fascinating considering the fact that um, with COVID, it seems that you would assume that people want more clients, but it seems like you guys are having more issues with crazy people, which I guess on some level makes sense. And don't mind me, I'm gonna have a glass of blueberry wine. I got this blueberry wine from a local vineyard, it's amazing. And today is definitely a chill, have a glass of wine. I had a great day yesterday in my groups. We started a new uh, boot camp for personal finance on a leash. You guys can always join if you want to. Um, anyone who joins personal finance on a leash this year, will get a year free of my credit repair and super savings group coaching that I have next year. We also did a great workshop in Grow Wealthy Grooming. That workshop was all about um, scheduling tasks like a boss, which was really fun. Um, And guys, I'm gonna do a walkthrough uh, screenshot. That way I can show you guys where you can find the replay for that later if you are a member of my Grow Wealthy Grooming membership. So again, let's go ahead and start talking about how to fire clients without burning bridges. So if you've ever done any coaching with me or if you've been around me at all, you'll know my first question. Why do you wanna fire this client? You know, is it because they're not doing what they're told? Is it because they rub you the wrong way? Do they have a pet that you don't like? What about this client is creating problems enough that you don't want to take money from them anymore. Now, for many of us, we should have never allowed the client to be one of our clients in the first place. A lot of you guys just take anybody with a wallet. Anybody with money is your client. And then it becomes problems because they're trying to fit into your business model, but it just doesn't simply work. Or a lot of you guys, when you started your business, you had different rules and the rules have changed. Um, I'll use myself as a perfect example. When I started my salon, uh, I was always upfront. I had a lot of freedom and flexibility because I wasn't very busy in the beginning. I had lots of times to answer questions. I was able to get people in last minute. I was pretty desperate. For those of you guys that don't know, I lived in my car when I was Pregnant with my son, I opened my salon four days before my son was born. So anything that could be groomed and had a wallet, you know, money and could be groomed, I would do anything at that point for money. So that was just how it was. But that wasn't the right way to do it. So a lot of the clients that started to give me trouble were clients that liked the way my salon was at first. I didn't mind if people wanted to stay in the salon while I was grooming because I was pretty lonely. The first six months of my grooming salon, I was so poor, my newborn son and I lived in it illegally. So if somebody wanted to stay during the groom and talk to me, I didn't really mind. Um, But as I grew and I started adding groomers and I started having, you know, five to 10 dogs a day, it became impossible. When I had like two dogs a day, it didn't matter. I didn't really have strict hours in the beginning because I just simply wanted people to show up. If somebody drove by and was like, hey, I have my Bichon in the car, you know, for me, that was $45. That was a big deal. I remember wondering if I had enough money to send my son to daycare and daycare was so cheap. Uh, Well, comparatively to my area, my area is normally four to $600 a week. And I found a place for $200 a week that was full time. Um, That meant, you know, like $40 a day. And sometimes that was really hard to come by. Um, Now I I laugh at it, you know, I spend more 
on in Starbucks than I used to spend on daycare. With different seasons of my life, it's interesting. But going back to that, so when I was ready to fire these clients, was it their fault that their expectations were not being met? No. So they're going to complain and they're going to be upset. Um, good, bad, or indifferent, that doesn't change the fact that I wanted to fire them, but it just adds a new lens to the reason that we're going to fire them and how we're going to treat them. Um, and I have a couple examples that I wrote down. Um, and if you guys have questions, again, if you guys are watching this on Facebook, I cannot see your comments on Facebook. You're going to have to come to YouTube and YouTube, you guys can actually go ahead and be live with me and go ahead and put in comments if you guys wanna have your examples be talking about live here. So let's say for instance, the people that were used to staying. And now that I have at, the, at one point in my business, I had five groomers and we were grooming an average of 40 pets a day. That owner can't stay there. The way it started to work was that if you had a bath dog, they were guaranteed done within three hours. If they were a haircut dog, they were guaranteed done in four hours. So the client that was used to their to staying and used to having the dog done start to finish, that client is no longer my client, but instead of them moving on, they're hoping to change me and be the exception to the rule. And I can't argue with them anymore. And they're not willing to quote unquote, leave to go to greener grassroots. I'm going to have to be the person, I'm gonna to have to be the bad guy and ask them to find somebody else. And the first thing I would do in that instance um, is affirm their pet. You know, make sure they know it's not about them, it's not about their pet. You know, Fluffy, you know, you know, it's been really amazing taking care of Fluffy for the last two years. You know, as you know, we've grown exponentially in the last two years. I want to thank you so much for being a part of that growth. I've noticed that you are used to us having Fluffy groomed straight through. That's really not a service we're going to be able to offer in the future. I have a list of three names that I can give you that may suit you better because I'm not going to be able to do any more start to finish grooms. You're not going to be allowed to stay. You're welcome to stay under these terms and conditions, X, Y, Z, whatever they are, but we're unable to accommodate the, whatever their request is. Hi, Kelly, good to see you. I'm sorry, I itched my nose, everybody. Unsexy. Um, so you could do that. That's one way. So if it's just a matter of you have outgrown a service or you've realized the service does not work for you anymore, you might have to do that. And it's very uncomfortable. Um, I hate to say it this way. It's gotten, I was talking to my friend Lynn about this. Um, I have been, I'm single and dating is very interesting. I say no a lot. Like there's nothing wrong with you. You're just not right for me. And I feel like that is exactly how I feel like in grooming. You know, this there was nothing wrong with this client. That client that I was talking about, it's not their fault. I had set expectations that I could no longer meet and I just had to let them know that this was no longer an option. Um, and then from there, it's up to them. They can either conform and be a part of my business or give them names. So I always suggest three names. Um, you don't have to be you know, you don't have to like make sure that they're perfect, but by having three or four names of people that are not washing pets in Dawn, that, you know, when you walk in, the shop doesn't smell like mildew, you know, in my area, that's pretty easy. We have a tremendous amount of grooming salons. If you're in a more rural area, you know, ask your vet for references and just have a few, you know, and just say, these are people I've heard good things about. They might help you. And what's nice about giving them other options is you're not poo-pooing them and saying, cast them to the wind and they have to start all over again. You're giving them things. Say, you know, I personally don't know them very well, but I've heard good things about them. And this allows you, if you have one person to be very careful, um, and basically the story I have for that is I had one groomer that I would always refer to and she was wonderful until she started doing drugs, until she started, uh, 
you know, doing painkillers. And then all of a sudden, people were coming back and telling me the person I had referred them to um, was a crazy drug addict. And then I was like, oh man, if I had given them three names, then if one of them had been a drug addict, it wouldn't have been such a big deal. But if it's one person, now I'm basically projecting my reputation on them. If it's three or four, it's kind of like, you know, you can pick a couple of people. It's kind of like if you have a restaurant, you say to your friends, you say, oh, I love this restaurant. I would go to this restaurant versus picking three or four. If you go to the one restaurant they suggest and the food's terrible, it's almost like they blame you. Uh, and if you have friends like that, my friends are generally really good. I'm that friend, so that's what I mean. But going back to firing the client, let's also talk about an irate client, a client who no matter what you can do will not be satisfied. Now, there's many reasons why a client is not satisfied. Again, make sure it's not confusion. Nine times out of 10, I love you guys to death. Nine times out of 10, it's your fault a client's being unreasonable. It's because you either have not created a healthy boundary and you've kind of made things wishy-washy or you've set unrealistic expectations. Um, and you can have a, a client who just needs to be quote unquote trained and they'll become a great client. You know, I know it sounds crazy, but a lot of it is just standing your ground and being clear, but being clear with kindness. So let's say instead we have the irate client. So I had an irate client. Um, my story is pretty funny. Long story short, this woman at the shop, she had two dogs. Um, both dogs were very lovely, but you know, she just was from New York um, and we live in Rhode Island and you know, it was just nothing was ever good enough. Oh, do you have filtered water in your grooming salon? And we were like, I no, we don't. But Rhode Island doesn't have water like Arizona. We just have regular tap water. Oh, well, his grooming salon in New York has filtered water. I'm like, okay, that's good for them. Oh, well, we're going to be hand scissoring him, right? Uh, no, we're going to be, you want him like half an inch long. We're going to be using a clipper comb. Oh, okay. Well, don't, don't trim his eyelashes. And um, this is the kind of dog that does like, you know, like, you know, it's terrible. So I was like, I will do my best, but it, I, it's more important to me that we don't poke his eyeball out. And I just noticed this client had a lot of these kind of unintentional nitpicky things. She's very specific. She knows what she wants. And it's not a bad thing. I would rather have a client who's clear. Um, but I finally said to her, I said, listen, we can't, we can't meet your needs. You have very specific needs. We're not that kind of shop. There was another shop down the street run by a grooming judge, a grooming uh, competition judge. He can deal with those. My shop, we were all about super awesome customer service, like over the top. We love your dogs. We're going to do the best we can, but cute, short, uncomplicated haircuts. Uh, I, you know, we don't intentionally cut eyelashes, but I don't want my groomer spending an extra 20 minutes on a face to try not to cut eyelashes on a dog that's shaking its head around anyway. You know, we're not going to hand scissor a dog. It's just not the kind of business we were in. Um, so long story short, after being all of that, she said, that's fine. Do the best you can. Um, and then, you know, like all people like that, basically we had a policy that was you drop off your pet. You had to pick up within four hours and they already knew no matter what they had to pick up in four hours. Well, do you think she came up in four hours to pick up the dog? Of course not. Cause that would make sense. Uh, instead I called her. And she let me know that she was in the middle of a spa day and could not make it back. But if I wanted to send a groomer to go drop her pet off, that she would write me a check and mail it to me. And again, sometimes you have these clients where you're sitting there going like, what world do you live in that you think this is going to happen? And we were like, no, unfortunately it doesn't work. And uh, we're leaving to go home pretty soon. So, and she was very upset. She's like, well, you didn't tell me that you were leaving. I'm like, well, actually we did because that's the hours of operation we have. And the thing you came in, you signed because they had to sign 
every time that their policy, the haircut, and uh, the time they agreed to pick up the pet. And it's clearly stated uh, they had a 30 minute window afterwards. After that, it was a dollar a minute per every 15 minute cycles. And then anything beyond an hour past closing, then we would board the dock. So she's irate, she's freaking out. Long story short, she rushes over. She's in like a towel on her head. She's in a robe in slippers. And she comes in and she's screaming at me. She's screaming at me because it's my fault that her spa day was undone. And I was like, mm. and you just know this, per- there's nothing I could have done in that instance to have been more clear. Sometimes these people are just unreasonable. Now, what I could do in this instance is yell back, push back, you know, but the truth is yelling and screaming at a client never does you any good. It really doesn't, especially now in the day and age of the social media, you know, you know, just people going after each other. You don't want to end up on, you know, having the mob come after you. So, you know, she's sitting there, she's going, rah, 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 rah. so I'm just sitting there like, okay. And, you know, she's, what's the word she used? She just said that we were, uh, you know, terrible human beings and unreasonable. And how dare we come off like a luxury business when we're doing this? And then she throws her credit card at my head. Um, you know, I grab it and I look at it. I say, oh, ma'am, we don't take American Express. And I just hand it back to her. And then she proceeds to throw her visa at me. And then I pay for it. And then I just let her know. I say, listen, I said, I'm very sorry. We were unable to accommodate your needs. You know, we love, I know one of the dogs' name was AJ. You know, AJ and Fluffy are absolutely wonderful dogs. You know, we're very sorry to see that we can't meet your needs. You know, if you would like referrals, we're happy to give you referrals. However, at this time, we feel like that we can't meet your expectations and we feel it's best if you find somebody who can. And let me tell you, you know, she had nothing bad to say. She was upset, but she knew that she couldn't argue with that. You know, and she grumbled something like, well, you should be able to meet my needs. And I said, unfortunately, you know, with what we have for staff, you know, in my personal life, some restrictions, that's just not something I can accommodate. And left it at that. Um, You know, she never wrote a bad review. She just went on her merry way. And had she have come back, I probably would have. We had in the shop audio recordings and video recordings. You know, if I wanted to shame her, which I never think is a good idea, you know, I could just post like, listen, this lady threw things at my head. I kept my composure. You know, I was as ladylike as I could be. Because sometimes we really want to just stick it to them, like tell them off. But guess what? It doesn't really help anybody. Um, It's kind of like assuming that taking poison is going to kill your enemy. You being nasty to that person is not going to change them. If anything, it's going to reinforce to them how horrible you are. When you're nice, they feel like shit. It's really funny. It's like a judo mind trick, um, Jedi mind trick rather. You know, they feel disempowered by the fact that you're not going to roll around in the mud with them. And if any of you guys have known me for any length of time, I have no problem locking horns with people. Nada. Like, I will go toe-to-toe, but what I figured out in my business is that fighting with people who are picking a fight, there's generally something going on in their life. They have nothing better to do. There's no point. And you can fight with them and burn that bridge. I personally wouldn't. I think it's a really silly idea. Um, It's going to make you look bad. It's going to, um, yeah, it's going to make your business look bad. And it sets a poor precedent, you know, in the long run. And I'm sorry, I'm watching my cat. He's looking at knocking stuff over, so don't mind me. Um, Aaron is saying, here's a great future topic. Why cameras are unnecessary in every salon and mobile. Yeah, I highly, 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 highly suggest 
cameras, ideally with audio, find out your local laws. My state is a one party consent law. Um, it was some of the best stuff I ever did. The husband would come in wanting me to shave a dog. Wife would pick up pissed and I would pull up the camera and the audio was very explicit, like to the skin. He'd be like, yep, real, real short. Yep. You know, last time she only did like a, an inch long. Yep. And you want it shorter? Yep. And I would just tell him I don't get involved in marital disputes. Uh, social groomer saying, good for you. Keeping calm and collectors are really the best way to go even though you want to. Oh yeah, like I wanna like, listen, I like me a fight. Like I like, I'm a classic ENTP for those of you guys that uh, know Myers-Briggs. I'm the devil's advocate. That's what makes me really good at certain things. I can fight, like not physically, cause I'm not that person. But you wanna go, you wanna have an argument, like I have them for fun, you know. My family were notorious for arguing the same side against each other. Don't ask me, it's just a, it's just a family thing. All right. So now, actually, I'm going to put my hair the other way. Bloop. Ugh. All right. So let's say, let's use another example I have. Let's say instead you have a customer that won't follow your policies, right? Um, let's use the example of... Oh, hang on. Erin is saying, when people resort to mistreating us, we need to keep our composures and cameras back it up, remind us to be professional. Uh, when I was managing doggy daycares, I was shocked at the difference of my employees, the way they both treated dogs and treated each other when they were on camera versus when there was no camera. Um, I had way less issues with my employees and they definitely put in more effort. With customers and doggy daycare, I never know as much of a difference, but in grooming both me and my customers knowing they were on audio, they didn't pull as much stuff because they knew that I could just play it back. And I know it's so, it's so sad, like it's satisfying in the moment to argue with a client. You know, if, especially when they're writing rude things um, one thing I want you to remember is you never know what's happening with people. Um, and I'm going to say this hopefully without crying because you guys know it's a sore subject for me, you know, but we never know what's going on in people's lives. Like when I lost my daughters, um, I was not okay. I was really not okay for at least a year. Um, you know, and there was nothing physically wrong with me. You wouldn't know if you didn't know. And so, I mean, there were days when like I couldn't get out of bed. I was so sad and just having such a hard time and things would set me off. Hi. So, you know, things that were not a big deal all of a sudden became life or death. I remember the very first time I went to the grocery store, you can't sit there. My cat is sitting on my mouse. Hopefully he doesn't knock it over. Um, you know, when I first went to the grocery store right after they, no, you can't do that, my friend. Boop. Um, right afterwards, and I was just waiting in line and I just needed like three things. I just needed some food. Um, and somebody was just like talking and talking and talking and I just literally yelled, shut the fuck up. And they just looked at me like I was crazy. Cause I was crazy, I was in a, bad place but I didn't want to chit chat and I didn't want to pretend and I didn't want to be like my kids just died I just want to get this food and get the hell out of here so we never know what's going on um I just want to throw that out there because I think too often we want to blame people but the way people treat you speaks more about them than it does about you and I'm not saying you should ever accept it um and creating policies and boundaries is the easiest way to start creating that distance and if you guys have examples of how a customer would treat you and you want me to walk you through how I would do that please feel free I'm going to go through another time I fired a client and hopefully my cat doesn't knock everything over you see him he's being all kinds of crazy fire maybe because he hears his name that's my cat's name is fire um, you know, go ahead and put it in the YouTube comments and I will go ahead and use that as an example. Um, another instance where I fired a client was a client 
completely lost themselves. They start screaming at me. We had a little chihuahua, very sweet. We had quick to nail. Um, and she had white um, carpets at home. And we didn't quick him, but for whatever reason, when he got home, he then bled on the carpets. And so she came to the salon with uh, estimates. Like an hour later, it was crazy. She had called a carpet company that for blood removal on her white carpets and the dog had gone upstairs and downstairs. And she had basically brought it in. And then as a business owner, I had to say, okay, what is going on that this is happening and how do I stop it? And it was just bad luck. I mean, who the hell gets white carpets and has a pet? You know, so I just had to explain to them. I said, listen, I said, we're very sorry to hear that this happened. You know, we don't know why the nail was quicked, as you can see from the video. Again, Aaron talking about that. It's not like he left with blood. We don't know how it happened. You know, I'm more than happy to do something for you, whether that is free services, but I'm not paying to have your entire house shampooed and carpeted. And again, she pushed back. So that is an instance where you have to fire a client gently because you can't take that client back. If a client thinks that you are responsible to shampoo and carpet their entire house um, over a quick nail, there's not much to go from there. Um, so I want to say his name was Rodney. He was a really cute little chihuahua. He was actually really sweet. Um, so I said, you know, we love Rodney. He's a great boy. You know, we love clipping his nails. If his nails are going to have an instance where they could potentially get quicked and it's a situation where he's going home to a house that this instinct could happen again, we don't feel comfortable putting you or ourselves in that position that you're not going to be satisfied. You know, we think it's best if you go to your vet where your vet will be able to, you know, insert issue. So for this one, make sure that his nails are done. Um, you know, we're not in a position if you're coming in for a nail trim to have him stay to make sure that he's not going to scratch his nails open or anything like that, you know, or we could do nail caps. But at that point, when someone hands you a several hundred dollar bill, I wouldn't even offer them nail caps. I would just be like, nope, this person. And you want to make sure, again, you affirm the pet. You want to say how it's, it's not about them doing the wrong thing. It's about the fact that you're not compatible. Again, think about it this way. Think about it like you're breaking up with somebody. You know, when I, perfect example, I went on a date recently. It was not great. It was not great. Um, wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. And when I called him, I said, you're a really nice guy. I know you're going to be really happy someday. I'm just not a good fit. You know, I don't need to go into what he did wrong if he asks. You know, I can gently say things that I just didn't find to be fitting, right? But I'm not going to sit there and berate somebody. It doesn't make any sense. And as satisfying as it may seem, it's eventually going to do things. You want a second? I would also highly suggest you guys stop firing people over text. Stop having these difficult conversations with text. There's no way to have, so think of it this way. If you wouldn't break up with somebody over text, you shouldn't fire someone over text. Now, if you are uncomfortable, then I would suggest an email, but not many of us email our clients. I, I can't think of how many of us, you know, frequently email our clients. There are some groomers that do, but the majority of us either call on the phone or we text. I would, I think it is very professional to have the hard conversation. Ghosting is completely unacceptable. You can't just ghost people. You can't play games with them. Don't lie to them. You know, you can definitely stretch the truth or sanitize the truth is something I've heard before people have said. But, you know, a lot of what happens is without 
being able to have these adult conversations. You know, life gives us these little tests. Go ahead and step into them. You know, if I couldn't have those conversations with my, with these clients, then if there's ever a real issue, then I'm not going to be able to deal with it because I don't have that muscle built up. We've all kind of get, we need thicker skin. You know, it's really uncomfortable to tell someone that you've been grooming a while that they're no longer a good fit. First thing I said, like, like I said, I would do is make sure they're not trainable, coachable. Again, let's say if they had, um, what was, I know I saw something recently in one of the groups. Oh, the person is always late for pickup, like not pickup, drop off. They're always like 10, 15 minutes late. And at this point, this groomer was doing one-on-one. So it was so interesting. So, and they had, before they were pretty flexible about drop-off times. It wasn't a big deal. And now that they have to do everyone start to finish, now it matters. So instead of basically bitching and moaning about this client, I would coach them to say, hey, Susie Q, I love grooming Fluffy. He's a great dog. I really need you to hold to your appointment time. Because of COVID, everything has kind of changed. And if, when you're late, it pushes everything back. And I want to make sure I give Fluffy all the time, care, and attention that he deserves. And when you're late and you're running behind, that means that he has to go without. And I don't think that's really fair to him. And honestly, it doesn't really make me feel all that great because I want to make sure you get the best service. What can we do to solve this? And then just shut up. Just shut up and let them talk. Let them talk and just be quiet because they're going to think. And if they say something like, oh, well, I need more flexible drop-off time. And you can be like, well, and again, this is up to you and your policies. For me, I would say that's fine. I just want you to understand that that cuts into the time that I can do the service. So that may mean that I'm not going to cut his nails or clean his ears because I need to make sure his haircut is done. Or, you know, with a bath dog, you know, that may mean that he might go home wet. Not damp, say wet. And if they're okay with that, then you as the business owner have to decide if this is acceptable to you or if you don't want your name going out like that. And I have no preference. I think you all gotta do what you gotta do. Um, At different stages in my business, I've had different feelings. You know, I've been grooming long enough that when I first started, I was like, eh, if they want a wet dog, who the hell cares? And then now, you know, I probably wouldn't do it. That said, you know, if you don't want to do that and they say, yeah, I don't care if he's wet. Yeah, I don't care if his nails and ears get done, whatever. It's more important. They're not saying it's more important to be late, but that is what they're inferring. And then you can say, I'm really sorry to hear that. You know, my standards are really high and that's why I think you picked me. And if that's not important to you, then maybe I can give you the names and numbers of other people who would be a better fit for you. And just leave it at that. You don't have to justify. A lot of you guys are justifying. A lot of you guys almost wanna like, not argue, but when you're talking to these clients, I want you to stop and think, you know, why are you trying to convince this person to stay with you? If they want your services, they will get your services. It's really difficult to sit there and verbally justify. Again, I'm sitting here explaining in a very clear way why I can or cannot. And it's up to them to then decide if they're going to come up to my standard or if they don't want to. And it's okay if they don't want to. I mean, I really would rather them stay. But if it's someone I, oh, hang on, let me read this comment. Social grooming saying, a groomer I know does this. She will block clients and just not respond when she no longer wants to deal. Blows my mind. I understand why. I understand why groomers do this. I opened my first shop when I was 23 and that was that was tough. Oh my God, no, I was younger than that. Let's not talk about that, Jesus. Um, but that said, at 23, I really didn't have the emotional capacity 
to deal with a customer like that. In my 30s, I feel very differently. And I'm sure I will feel even better in my 40s. Um, and part of it could be that I've, I've gotten used to it and gotten a thicker skin. But you can't block people. You can't at, want to be treated like a professional and then be incredibly unprofessional. You know, it, it's just not, it's not fair to the client. Because don't forget too, sometimes you're going to fire a client and then they're going to become another groomer's best client. I remember I, far, I fired the Shih Tzu mix named Kobe. The mom was just unreasonable. Everything I did was never enough and we were not that kind of shop. You know, you have to figure out how you're going to deal with that. But with her, you know, I gave her the name of three numbers, three names and numbers rather. And she became that groomers, one of their best clients. And it's because her wants fit that business better. I was not that person. I wasn't. I just told her flat out. I said, I don't do pick up and drop off. I said I would do it one time because you were away. Um, her, She was away. Her son was away. The dad owns a local business and he couldn't pick up the pet. So I, it was no big deal. I, when the dog was done, you know, I brought it to daycare. Um, wasn't a big deal. But then it became an expectation and so when that happened, I said, listen, I really love Kobe. He's adorable. He's a little crazy, but I love him. You know, I can't do pick up and drop off. I'm happy to refer you to a, a groomer that regularly does pick up and drop off and even offers her own daycare if you want to do that service. And they fit better. And that's okay. I want them to be happy. Aaron is saying, wow, that's avoiding confrontation. We need to act like the bosses we are and handle things. We've got to we've got to build up that muscle. It's like anything, you know, guys. It is hard to deal with confrontation when you you're already emotionally like this is one of the things that when I'm growing my business, it's really hard. The example I use, it's really hard to have a dog bite you, pee in your wound, and then go up front and let them know that the face isn't going to be even because the dog is aggressive and crazy. You know, doing those two jobs is very difficult. It's very hard to be mad at the dog and not bring that to the front. And I'm not saying you're necessarily mad at the dog itself. It's more of the situation because pets are pets. They're living, breathing creatures with their own individual minds. They're gonna do things that don't really deal, that we don't want them to do. And then having the clear head to do that. There are lots of exercises you guys can do to help strengthen that. But it's pretty, it's pretty, it's something you just have to do. And um, it was interesting. I went to a great riding clinic recently and she would just have them, like these people were all riding very, very green horses. Green horses means like young horses, inexperienced horses. And they were doing very complicated things. And these horses would get very frustrated. You know, they'd like rear a little bit or buck. And, you know, and the rider would get very annoyed because obviously this horse is like 17 hand sights, this enormous thoroughbred. And it just like, it's like, no, I don't want to do that. No. You know, and she would just have them breathe out. She's like, imagine uh, a little ball. And I thought it was fascinating. She's like, there's a ball in your stomach of stress and anger. Breathe out all your emotions. I thought that was a very fascinating visual, you know, just to be emotionless, um, because ultimately, we have to take responsibility. And the more emotional we do, the more personal we take things, the harder our job becomes. You know, I can't take it personally when a dog bites me. It can't. Because it's not about me. Maybe this dog has had a bad situation before. Maybe this dog has not been trained. Maybe I did something that triggers this dog. It's not... It's not necessarily the dog's fault. I can't take it personally. It's not the dog hates me. The situation is just bad. So think of it like that with your clients. The biggest thing is, is to treat people with dignity and respect, even though they don't deserve it. Um, you know, I think sometimes we think that people should just treat us professionally, but you're hoping and assuming that every groomer they've ever dealt with has been a professional. 
We've talked about this a thousand times on this show and I'm gonna wrap up. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them in the YouTube comments and I will answer them. Um, but I'm gonna start wrapping things up. With this, I wanna remind you guys that, you know, we have a lot of very unprofessional people in our industry. And I'm not talking about people swearing. I'm not talking about people with colorful hair and that are eccentric. I'm talking about people that ghost customers, people that argue with customers. If you go into these groups, like I hate Facebook advice, like these Facebook group advice make me wanna shake people. Don't give lip to a customer. It's not about them being right. You can be firm. I can be very firm without picking a fight with a customer. You know, for instance, if I have a customer who is being rude to me, let me tell you, if someone's being derogatory to you and you just simply say, ma'am, that's not very nice. They have to go out of their way to be more of a dick and an asshole to continue that train of thought, you know, or very immature. Like if I say to someone like, you know, her, let's say them saying like, oh, you're just a groomer. I'd be like, ma'am, that's not very nice. I take very good care of Fluffy, you know, let's say that. And she would then have to go even more petty of, oh, you think you're a dog groomer? No, 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 no. Or, oh, I just meant, you know, insert derogatory comment. There's nothing she can say that is graceful or elegant in that moment that doesn't come off terrible, except for, I'm sorry, you're right, or I apologize. You know, but if I sat there and been like, I'm a dog groomer and here's all my wonderful things, or me, I'm a, I'm a certified feline master groomer. There are 300 of us in the world and I can sell cat hair and da da da. Then I'm just feeding into it. There's, you know, it, it, I know we want to, but it doesn't do us any good, unfortunately. So I hope this has been very helpful. If you guys have more questions um, or scenarios, on how to do this, I'm happy to help you guys and work through these scenarios. Um, the main thing is, good, bad, or indifferent, is hold in a lot of those emotions. And it's important to vent those things. But I also want you to remember that groomers generally don't, they really don't understand what we do. They really don't. They wash their dog at home in the sink and let it run around. You know, or maybe they shave their kid's head during COVID and they think that's what grooming is. They don't understand what we do. And, you know, and I, I always use the example, I, uh, I fired my groomer. I loved my groomer for my dog. I, for those of you guys that don't know, I'm a, I'm a certified feeling master groomer. I own my own feeling exclusive business, blah, blah, blah. I have a standard poodle. I don't want a groomer anymore. That said, um, you know, so I love this groomer, but I had no idea what was included in my groom. I had no idea. Like, I didn't care what it cost, but I had looked on her website. I had looked on the counter. I wanted my dog's ears plucked. I wanted her, you know, groomed. I want everything, you know, fluffed and dried in a very short, modified, kind of Germany kind of look. Cause she's got a full tail and I want 40 on the ears, 40 on the face, 40 on the feet. And I felt like every time I would reiterate what I had, I was actually becoming the person that would bring an index card in for what I wanted and things wouldn't get done. Um, or, you know, like I wanted her nails dremeled. I can dremel the dog's nails, but I don't want to. I don't care what it costs. I don't know if it's included or not. And I'd have to be in the waiting room checking the dog over. And I don't want to be that customer. I don't. I want to just be able to trust you, drop my dog off, pay whatever the hell it costs and get it done. So good, bad or indifferent. Um, and I don't think it was her intention, but I asked her, I said, listen, I need to know what's included in my groom because I want these services. And she gave me attitude. And she's like, what do you mean you don't know what's included in your groom? You come here every month, sometimes twice. And I said, yes, I do. And these are the services I wanted. Are these included or are these more? 
And she's like, well, we always draw them with our nails. I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. And a lot of times you don't pluck her ears. And then when I call, you tell me you did pluck them. I have to take a picture, send it to you. You know, and as a customer, I don't want to have to do these. I don't want to call my groomer a liar. I don't. I really don't. I just want the services I want. Um, And there were other issues like pick up and drop off. I would tell them I live in 45 minutes away. Please give me an hour warning. And they would call me when the dog was done and say, you have to be here in 15 minutes. Otherwise, we have to charge you a pickup fee. And I would be like, I told you an hour. So I could be that bad customer very easily because I would ask for things. And if they're not done or I can't figure out how to make it work, I will just leave. But other people won't. Other people just keep bitching and moaning until you hate them. And that's not necessarily their fault. A lot of those things that I had to leave over could have been easily fixed. And they chose not to. And that's a real shame. Because believe it or not, my dog's pretty, she's a pretty good girl. I just don't want to do it. It's too much work for me. Uh, social groomer saying, this was amazing. So glad I could catch you live finally. This is an amazing topic and so spot on. Thanks for sharing. Aw, thank you. I'm always here on Mondays. Um, you know, and, and I will say, so Alan is saying they sound like real professionals. They're, they're really, the worst part is they're an amazing groomer. Um, her staff is kind of out of control. They're not really, she's, she's right now, she's a groomer who happens to own a business. And I don't think honestly she would want to own a business if she had the opportunity. I think she would, uh, leave her business if she could. But that said, it, there's just always an issue. And that happens in a lot of shops when you're grooming a full day of dogs, you're hoping your staff is doing what they're told to do, but no one's checking quality. No one's double checking anything. Um, And she's got her own life with her kids and her her life. So she doesn't have the mental bandwidth to deal with it. It's just a shame. You know, like she would, and, but her prices were so low too. She would be like, oh, yeah, it's 95 for a full groom, a standard poodle. I hand her 120. I'm like, girl, that you should go like way up, but that's for you. Anyway, guys, it has been so great talking to you. I'm sorry I went a little longer today, um, but I'm hoping this was helpful and I hope you guys try and use these tactics. Um, and if you guys need me to, we can always do some role playing with this. This is always really fun. Um, I had to practice this a lot. Um, for those of you guys that don't know me very well, I love me some arguing. Uh, you can ask Lynn about, like, I used to have people block me all the time. Not that I'm a troll, but like, you know, I'm definitely, uh, I say it as it is. And I've definitely, as I've gotten older, a little bit nicer. And I think that it's not even that I'm nicer. I just, don't care as much I'm not it's not life or death if somebody wants to be stupid you know Darwinism will take them out you know that's on them you know but if they want to learn and they want to grow there's always more to learn and more to grow anyway guys so let's go ahead and do our sales pitch if you would like to work with me there are three main ways to work with me we have our one-on-one coaching if you guys want to create Big changes in your business. I would highly suggest you these blah, blah, blah. highly suggest you sign up for my monthly coaching, which is nine ninety seven a month. We also have my online membership and Grow Wealthy Grooming membership that is only thirty five dollars a month. We just did a fantastic scheduled tasks like a boss workshop. We're also next week going to do autopilot, which is putting your business on autopilot. You can. If you're a member of Grow Wealthy Grooming, you get those workshops for free. If you are not, it is $47. Um, I would also highly suggest if you guys are having any trouble with your personal finances, consider signing up for personal finance on a leash. You know, this is a 12 week course and it's going to be $199 for three months. You can always pay it all up front, but I would suggest you take advantage of the payment plan. And with that, we teach you guys how to get your personal finances under control. A lot of you guys will have these quote unquote money problems or you need to increase how much money you are charging when you don't actually know how much money you need to bring in to steady your life and you're using your your business as your personal piggy bank. 
So that's gonna help it. We just started that on Sunday. Now is a great time to sign up. That way you can continue to do the entire course. And the other thing I wanna suggest is that if you are thinking about personal finance on a leash, um, we will be having next year a repair your credit and saving up for either a mobile or a business or so our super saving group coaching program. And if you sign up for personal finance and a leash this year, which is 2020, then next year you will get an entire year for free. That is going to save you anywhere between a thousand to twelve hundred dollars on that group coaching course. Ba -da! So Thank you guys so much for being here. It is always nice to see you. Sorry I went a little long today, but there was a lot to talk about in this topic. All right, guys, I will talk to you later. Happy grooming. I gotta find my outro. I don't know where anything is. It's just that kind of day. Bye, guys.